Rejoice in the Lord, for he is the father of our salvation. Rejoice in the Lord, for he sent his only Son to live among us. Rejoice in the Lord, for God calls us here today. And together we light the Christ candle to remind ourselves of the good news that God is always with us. and welcome to Paula Memorial Presbyterian Church. We're so glad you could join us for our online service. We have a few announcements about events going on in the life of the church. A reminder that you are welcome to come to our in-person service. You no longer need to sign up on Eventbrite. You can just come to worship. We do have a limit of 80 people per service, so we are asking people to come a little bit earlier. We're also co still collecting gift cards for our friends at Matthew House. If you have a gift card you'd like to give, please contact myself or Louise Dupree and we'll be happy to collect it. We're asking that you please keep Beth and Darren and Sarah and Will in your thoughts and prayers this week as they mourn the passing of Gloria. She was a wonderful woman and a faithful member of Pollen. So please keep her family in your prayers. And now let us come before our God and let us pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord, we joyfully gather our hearts before you this morning with our songs of joyful praise as we remember and celebrate your many wonderful acts of love and grace that have forever transformed our world and our life. So we ask that you would once again accept our sacrifice of prayer and praise. Creator God, we praise you this morning for your endless love and mercy. Throughout the ages, you've walked with your people, healing their wounds, raising their spirits, and inviting them to become part of your new creation. We praise you, Lord, for the way your Holy Spirit rests upon your people as you raised up great priests and prophets, teachers, kings, and queens to look after your people and to guide them to walk on your righteous path. We praise you, Lord, for the mercy you showed to your people in the past and for us right now. For when we have strayed from your ways, you offer us words of repentance 
and a promise that will always have a way back home to you. We praise you, loving God, for the gift of your only Son. We praise you, Lord, that Jesus came and lived among us, sharing in our joy and our sorrow. We praise you, Lord, for the many wonderful and life-giving teachings that Jesus has given us, as he challenges us to love you with all that we are and to love our neighbor as ourself. We praise you, Lord, for Jesus' faithfulness, that when the time was right, he was willing to go as far as the cross and the grave for our sake, so that by his wounds we could be made whole. By his death, our sins could be forgiven. We praise you, loving God, for the good news that death could not contain the Lord of everlasting life. For we know that Christ has risen from the dead and is now with you in glory. At this time, Heavenly Father, we turn our thoughts and prayers to the world around us, trusting in your promise to always listen to your children praying. Loving God, we pray today for the people in Haiti. We pray especially for the missionaries who've been kidnapped by a local gang. Father, let your spirit roam free in this nation. Help other nations to come together to seek to set the captive free. But we pray for a country that has had so much political turmoil and for the people that feel powerless. Help restore them to a fullness of life. Give them the strength and all that they need to build up a society where the weak are looked after and no one needs to fear being kidnapped for money. We continue to pray, loving God, for those who work on the front line of COVID-19. We thank you for all the many ways we've moved forward, for the gifts of vaccination, and we pray that you will encourage us to keep walking this path that keeps our community safe, which keeps those who we love safe. We thank you for the ability to reclaim more of our everyday life and ask for your peace to keep moving forward. We pray today for those in our world who are ill, those who have had surgery and those who are recovering from it. Grant to them your healing power. Give them peaceful nights and joyful days. We pray for Beth and Darren, Sarah and William, as they mourn the passing of Gloria. We give you thanks that Gloria is now free from pain, but we pray that you will be with those who miss her the most. Let them hear anew the promise of the empty grave and let them find peace knowing that Gloria is safe in your arms. All this we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us how to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
It's now time for the children of God's children story. Now I have a question for you. When you go to the doctor, do you go and say, well, there's something wrong with me, but I don't know what's wrong? Or do you go and say, well, I fell on my knee and now my knee is really sore. Can you help me with it? Or if you go to the dentist and you've got a cavity, do you go and say, something's wrong with my teeth? Or do you go and say, I have a cavity that needs to be filled in? You notice there's a difference between those two things. One is a, a general not feeling good, and one is I know what the problem is and I want help fixing it. The reason why I'm asking you these questions is I now want you to think about the way you talk to God. In your prayers when you talk to God, do you say, I just need help? Or do you say, God, I am really struggling because Tommy's being a bully at school and I don't know what to do. Or God, I really want to thank you because yesterday was the most amazing day ever. I got to hang out with my friends and we got ice cream. It sounds kind of silly to think of prayer like that, but that's what it is. It's a conversation with God. And God wants to know what's going on in your heart, in your mind. God wants to know about the fact that you got a home run in baseball. Or God wants to know if you struck out and felt bad. Our God loves us so much that he wants to know all about our life, just like our mom and our dad and our grandparents want to know. And so in today's story, we hear about Jesus healing a man named Bartimaeus. And he wasn't afraid when he saw Jesus. He knew what he wanted. He said, God, I want to see. And Jesus healed him. Just like God has promised when we pray out to him. That when we feel weak and we ask for strength, God gives us that strength. God wants to talk to us about what's going on in our life, how we feel, how we're excited and we're afraid, and we're allowed to go into detail because God loves us so much that he gave us Jesus. So I want you to remember this next time you pray to God. Take time to tell him what's going on in your life in detail because God wants to hear from you because he loves you and he's proud of you and he wants to hear how you are doing. And this is the good news that we have to celebrate this day. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our first scripture reading today comes to us from Psalm 40, 34. I will exalt the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. And our second reading comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. Then they came to Jericho, as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd. When they were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Tinnemus, was standing by the roadside begging. When he heard shouts that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, 
But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they came to the blind man. Cheer up on your feet. He is calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am sure we can all recall some deeply moving experience in our lives and a hymn through which the Holy Spirit ministered to us at that time. Such a hymn is, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. It is not considered to be an example of great literary writing, but its simply stated truths have brought comfort to countless of God's people since it was written in 1857. The author of the text, Joseph Scriven, was born in Dublin, Ireland, but at the age of 25, he migrated to Canada. It is believed he left Ireland for two reasons. He became estranged from his family over different religious beliefs, and his fiance had accidentally drowned the night before their wedding. He developed a different way of life. He took the Sermon on the Mount literally and never refused to help anyone who needed it. A person meeting him in Port Hope, Ontario, saw he was carrying a saw and some wood. He asked a passerby who this man was because he wanted to hire him. The reply came, you cannot get that man. He saws wood only for the poor widows and sick people who cannot pay. Scriven never intended to publish the words of what a friend we have in Jesus. Upon learning of his mother's serious illness and because he could not be with her in Ireland, he wrote a letter enclosing the text. Sometime later, when he was ill, a friend happened to see the poem scribbled on a piece of paper. He asked Scriven if he had written it, to which Scriven replied, the Lord and I did it between us. After his death, also by accidental drowning, the citizens of Port Hope erected a monument on the Port Hope Peterborough Highway with the text and these words. Four miles north, in Pengali's cemetery lies the philanthropist and author of this great masterpiece, written at Port Hope, 1857.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There are more people on the street than was normal this week, Bartimaeus noticed. He could hear the crowds gather to welcome strangers into their city. With cries of welcome as more and more people made their way through Jericho to the holy city to celebrate Passover. Bartimaeus always played close attention to the crowds as their voices let him know what was going on in the world around him. Ever since his eyes went dark, it was only the voices of people who let him know what day it was, and what was happening in the community. The voice of his neighbors would let him know when it was the Sabbath day. It was a voice of celebration that helped him understand that now was a time to give thanks for the abundant blessings of God. And it was the voices of people that let him know if he overstepped what was allowed as he begged on the street. For the voices were the only warning he received before a blow would come, because his presence, his begging, began to annoy someone too much. He was only allowed to exist as long as he didn't interrupt people's lives too much. For if he crossed that line, he'd be chased out of the city. No one would care too much if he was gone, as many believed his lack of sight was a sign that God was punishing him for some great sin, and who would miss one more beggar at the gate. So Bartimaeus learned to be still, learned how to walk the thin line between begging and becoming a nuisance to the community that he relied on to sustain him. And so he waited in darkness, listening to the world go on around him, listening to the voices welcome strangers into the city, listening for the sound of coins hitting his bowl, which meant he would eat that night, and listening to the world he no longer felt like he belonged to, for the world existed for those who could see it, and now all he could see was darkness. And it was because of this darkness he felt alone and afraid. 
But even in his darkened state of mind, Bartimaeus couldn't help but hear the voices speak about a man named Jesus. He overheard countless stories about this man who seemed to be blessed by God. He was able to heal the sick, forgive the sinner, and open one's eyes to a new understanding of God's kingdom in their midst. Bartimaeus found it hard to imagine that one man was able to do all of these things. Or at least that's what he thought, until he remembered back to the time when he was able to enter the temple and the synagogue. He remembered the promises of Isaiah and the other prophets who spoke about God sending a Messiah, someone who would come to care for God's people, even those who felt lost and alone in the dark. Bartimaeus felt something in his heart at that moment, something that had been missing ever since he first lost the light so long ago. He felt hope. And he promised himself that he was given the opportunity. He would cry out to Jesus, no matter what. Once that promise was made, Bartimaeus waited. He waited until the voices told him that Jesus was coming to town. And then there were countless more voices, all calling out to Jesus, as more and more voices came to hear the good news that Jesus had to share with the town. Bartimaeus knew that this was his one chance, and so he raised his voice, calling out to Christ, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus kept on shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me even though people around him tried to shush him. They tried to silence his voice because he was interrupting what was going on around him. But he would not be silent. He had been silent far too long. So once more he shouted as loud as he could, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. And as he waited in the darkness for the shoves of those who had lost patience with him and were ready to cast him aside, instead he felt hands raise him up. He felt the crowds part as voices that once told him to be silent, now invited him forward, saying, Jesus wants to see you. And they encouraged him to come before Christ. And when he knew he must be standing before Jesus, he heard him ask, What do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus replied, Master, teacher, I want to see And in that moment, the darkness left his eyes, and he was able to see the face of God as he looked upon Jesus and knew that he was healed. There's something special about today's gospel reading, about the healing of Bartimaeus. It represents the very last time that Jesus will heal someone in the gospel of Mark. As after today's reading, Jesus enters into Jerusalem for the last time. And all too soon, he'll face the betrayal, the trial, the cross, and the grave. So today's story stands out as the end of Jesus' healing ministry. As after today, Christ will no longer go into towns seeking to save people one at a time but instead he'll go to the cross and offer himself for all of our sakes. But there's more to this day's story than just a blind man being able to see once more. So we're invited to spend time with Jesus and Bartimaeus to see how their story is able to impact our story 
and our relationship with our great creator. As there are going to be times in our life when we'll feel the need to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon us, just as Bartimaeus did so long ago. One of the very first lessons we're called to learn from Bartimaeus is that we need to be persistent in our faith. We need to be persistent in our prayers. Bartimaeus was able to overcome his fears and the way society treated him in order to reach out to Jesus. He never gave up once. Those others tried to shush him. He kept on crying out to the Lord, knowing that Jesus would hear him and answer. And we today are called to do the same thing. We often can feel burnt out and worn out by the state of our world. As so many times it fe- we might feel as if our prayers have no effect on the world around us. For those who we love are not always healed. And no matter how much we pray for it, at times it might feel as if earth is no closer to heaven. And so it's tempting to give up, throw our hands in the air and say that nothing can change. Because during our darkest days, it can often feel as if our prayers are falling on deaf ears. But today's gospel story reminds us that this is not true. For God always hears us. Just as Jesus was able to hear Bartimaeus' cries over the great crowd, our God is able to hear our prayers. And not only is God always listening for his children praying, he answers our prayers not always with the answer we might want to hear at the moment. But he always answers, sometimes with yes, sometimes with no, and sometimes with a not yet. The second thing we're able to learn from today's gospel story about Bartimaeus is that he knew right away what he wanted Jesus to do for him. How often in your own prayer life do you flat out ask God for something, be it to bring about healing or to change the world for the better? Do you say what you want or do you use vague terms when you ask God for something in Jesus' name? I know that I'm guilty of often asking for vague blessings, to be poured out upon the land, rather than naming the things that need to be changed in our world directly. Part of the reason for doing this is because I believe that God knows what I mean. The other reason why myself and others might not be as direct with our prayers is the fear that if we ask for something, and it doesn't happen, that might shaken our faith. Because when we're vague, there's more wiggle room to see God's grace and love in the world around us than we ask for something directly. And yet we're reminded today by Bartimaeus to call out to God and ask for what we need just as Bartimaeus did when he proclaimed that he wanted to be able to see, we're able to do the same thing with our needs because God is listening and God will answer. Because here's the truth. You and I and everyone else on this planet, we are are worthy of God's love. We are worthy of being saved by our Lord and Savior. We don't have to hedge our bets with God 
for when we can, we can call out to him just like Bartimaeus did so long ago and know that he will answer. So dare to believe. Cry out to the Lord when you feel worn out, when you are exhausted and need his help. Dare to be brave and call out to the Lord when you are grateful. Dare to be bold in your prayers and your praise because you are a beloved child of the living God. And our great creator longs to hear from each and every one of us. Be it a cry for salvation, a prayer of thanksgiving, or just a prayer to let him know that you are here and that you love the Lord because he first loved you. This is the good news of today's gospel story. We don't need to worry about interrupting or imposing on our God with our prayers and our praise. For our great creator loves to hear from us. And after, after all, he loves us so much, he was willing to send his only son to come and live among us so that we could be saved by his grace, set free by his love. Long ago, Bartimaeus wanted to be able to see once more. And so Jesus opened his eyes. What today do you want Jesus to do for you? For our Heavenly Father is waiting on us to call out to him, to save us from the challenges of this passing world, just as he waited for Bartimaeus so long ago. So think for a moment, what do you want God to do for you? And then be bold and ask for it, knowing that God will always listen to his children praying. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you give so richly to our lives that we cannot help but respond in kind. We ask that you would bless this offering. May it multiply and grow and serve your needs. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
now in the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen.